CBD oil and CBD containing products have shot up in popularity recently thanks to the many claims that it can do everything from cure cancer to treat your chronic pain. The sports world has also been part of this recent popularity and we just saw former NFL player Rob Gronkowski be pretty vocal about his support for the use of CBD containing products and even sign on to work with a specific company. Welcome back everyone. For those new, my name's Brian and this video is gonna be part one of a three part series looking at the intersection of CBD and sports. Here in part one, we're gonna ask this question of, is this CBD one big scam or is there some legitimate science behind its use? In part two, we'll take a look at the really challenging legal landscape around the use of CBD oil and CBD products and talk about why companies like the one Gronkowski are supporting might actually be doing things that technically are considered illegal. And finally, in part three, we'll take a look at how CBD is treated in professional sports leagues and the effect that it might have on athletes and ask this question of whether or not it should be allowed. Make sure you go subscribe to stay up to date for parts two and three. But for right now, let's get started with asking the question of CBD oil, is it a big scam or is there some good science? I wanna start off by giving you some basic explanation into the whole background of CBD and kind of this whole family of products related to CBD. CBD of course stands for cannabidiol and it's a compound that's a derivative of the cannabis family of plants. Cannabis sativa is the kind of overarching family of plants where these come from and those can be broken down into two particular ones referred to as hemp and marijuana. The difference between the two is the content of THC which is that psychoactive substance component of marijuana. In particular, hemp has less than 0.3% and marijuana has greater than 0.3% THC. CBD and THC are part of a family of compounds referred to as cannabinoids. These are compounds that act on the body throughout the endocannabinoid system to control different aspects of human physiology. There's three primary classes of cannabinoids. The first ones are phytocannabinoids, and these are your ones that are derived from plants. There's over a hundred of them, and CBD and THC are simply two of many. The second group are endocannabinoids, and these are the compounds that are produced by our body. You've probably heard of people getting a runner's high whenever they exercise, and it's thought that these endocannabinoids are what are responsible for those feelings of euphoria with a runner. And the third category are synthetic cannabinoids, and these are ones that are generated in a lab, in a pharmaceutical company. These cannabinoids like CBD and THC act on different receptors throughout the body, and that's how they impart these different effects that we see and read about in the news. Whether it's modulation of pain, control of anxiety, or release of enzymes to help with digestion, our body relies on signaling from one cell to another and on these things we call cell receptors. One way to think of this is these receptors can sort of be like doors to get information through to the cell. All of these doors are different in that they have very specific locks that control whether or not that information can get through into the cell. Different chemical compounds floating throughout our body provide the keys for these locks. And this can be anything from dopamine, epinephrine, serotonin, potassium, sodium, simple elements and electrolytes, all can function as the keys to unlock and access the doors to these cells and instruct the cells what to do. Sometimes each door only responds to one particular key, but it gets really confusing because sometimes multiple keys can affect the same door. CBD and THC can be thought of as keys trying to affect the information of what's going on behind the doors to these cells. One of the most challenging parts of understanding human physiology is that there are countless numbers of these specific types of receptors found throughout our body and through our different organ systems. And of course, because there's so many receptors, there's countless number of chemicals or compounds that can act on these receptors to cause the cell to do specific actions. THC has a strong affinity for the CB1 receptor, which is primarily located in the brain, and that's why we think it causes these psychoactive properties. But the specific action of CBD is a little more confusing and not as clear cut in terms of where specifically it's acting in the body, which is part of what's made the research so challenging and limiting in terms of its overall effect. With all the claims these companies are making about their CBD products, we would hope and think that there's pretty good scientific evidence out there to back it up. But the problem, as you might have expected, is that there really is not. Now, part of the problem with this is that there just hasn't been enough time for these studies to be developed, and the market has just outpaced the science. Another challenge is a lot of the studies out there have looked at cannabinoids in general, not specifically CBD. According to one big review article, there's only moderate quality evidence 
supporting the use of cannabinoids for things like chronic pain. When it comes to things like anxiety and sleep disorders, the evidence is much lower quality. And again, a lot of these studies have been done looking at cannabinoids in general, not specifically CBD. So it's hard to tease apart the difference between what the CBD is doing and what the THC is doing. CBD does have good evidence behind it for affecting neuropathic pain and inflammatory pain, but these studies have so far only been done in rat models. Regardless of that, we certainly can't say that CBD has no effect on the body. In 2018, the FDA actually approved a specific CBD drug for the treatment of two very particular types of seizure disorders that we see in kids. So we know that CBD does have effect on the body. The problem is we just don't have good evidence to understand yet what that particular effect is for the number of claims that these companies are making. I think a lot of the hype originated because there's a lot of good research and use for medical marijuana and THC in these types of conditions, and so people think that one cannabinoid has to be equal to the other. But that's not true. We know that THC and CBD act in very different ways in the body, and we just don't have the understanding yet of CBD for the government and doctors to be able to say that it's recommended for these things like chronic pain, anxiety, sleep, and so on. Another huge challenge with this question of the legitimacy of CBD is we have almost no idea about proper dosing aside from this specific approved drug for seizures. There's all range out there of doses, everything from people putting one or two drops in a cup of coffee to people taking hundreds of milligrams a day through pills. Scientists really have no idea how CBD is absorbed through the skin, and so there's thought that all these creams that have CBD in them, that, that CBD actually probably isn't even going into the body in any way. So that brings us back to this original question of, is it one big scam or is it legitimate science? I think 10 years down the road, we're gonna have much better understanding of this and we'll probably be at the point where doctors and scientists can talk about specific doses and the specific conditions and symptoms that it can help treat with good, sound scientific evidence. But where it stands right now, the landscape of the CBD market introduces a ton of potential for scam opportunities. Whenever you go to the store and buy that cream containing CBD, that's way more expensive than the other cream, we have absolutely no proof or evidence to say that that CBD is even being absorbed into your body through the skin. Similarly, when you go to the coffee shop and pay an extra $5 to have a few drops of CBD put in your coffee, Again, we have absolutely no clue if that's even a meaningful dose. Certainly there's a lot to be said about the placebo effect and just anecdotal evidence of people saying it makes them feel better, and that's great. But I think it's way too early for these companies to be making all these claims about the effect of CBD when A, we don't have the evidence truly backing it yet, and B, we don't have any idea about the proper dosing and the proper amount to actually have these effects. But that's it for part one. Make sure you guys are subscribed so you can see part two when we talk about the very challenging legal landscape around CBD, and then part three when we specifically bring it all back to professional sports. Thanks as always for watching everybody, and we'll see you later. Bye.